is. Okay, so the recording is in progress. So again, welcome to the April Wisconsin chapter NRHS meeting. Uh, we're meeting a little bit later uh, because last Friday was Good Friday, and I believe the church uh, would have been uh, occupied for different reasons. So again, welcome, and also welcome to Merger Day. April 14th, 2023 is Merger Day. The Canadian Pacific and the Kansas City Southern have become one railroad, so we lost two. Uh, we have two fallen flags. And tomorrow, I hope to be trackside and catch my first CPKC trains. So hopefully, if the weather cooperates, which it sounds like it's going to. So uh, we'll see what happens. So again, and for those of us in the room here, even though we're in Fox Point, uh, it is Milwaukee Day, 414. Uh, that's an original uh, area code for Milwaukee, so it's 414 Day. And so if you are a Milwaukeeite or were, uh, happy Milwaukee Day. So I uh, don't really have any other uh, big announcements. Uh, well, the next meeting, I suppose. <laughs> uh, the next meeting will be coming up uh, quite quickly because it's... Uh, obviously, because we're a little bit later, uh, that next meeting, you're going to have to put up with me a lot because uh, I will be presenting along with uh, good friend Dan Gridzalonic, one of our board members, and uh, we are going to do a presentation called Get Them Before They're Gone. Uh, Dan and I took a trip out west, and we went to the uh, check out the Montana Rail Link in Montana, and then down to the Powder River. So uh, it's going to be kind of a combined presentation, his photography, my photography, and ending with a little bit of video. So uh, we're going to do that. And I believe June right now, uh, our friend Dave Nelson is uh, penciled in for uh, a presentation uh, that he's doing uh, of Rob Robinson photos. So that's how we're going to end our year. And uh, are we before... Uh, before the end of the season, Ralph, are we going to know a banquet date or or no? Okay, so if we can, okay, because we forget that before June, because it's if it's in October, we'll need you know, if you know that's so. Okay, I can try and anoint, not anoint, a point, <laughs> anoint a point, whichever. So. Uh... <laughs> But uh, so, yes, so as of right now, uh, we're looking pretty good. We have 30 people in Zoom, and we currently have in the room, we have, uh, let's see, we have six, seven, 10 people in person. Uh, so things are looking pretty good. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn this over to uh, to our presenter for the evening, uh, he, possibly one of the youngest presenters we've had. And uh, the way I, I found out about uh, Kenny is he actually uh, contacted me through the chapter's Facebook page. He heard from watching our last uh, video the last month that we were looking for someone this month. Uh, he sent me a message and we talked a little bit uh, through Facebook. And then him and I and Dave Nelson and Dan Grizzolanik, we had a meeting and did, did a, uh, a little run through with Kenny and uh, I think you're going to be uh, very pleased with uh, with him and his presentation. And uh, so uh, he is actually at his home in uh, Maryland, correct? And uh, so I'm going to, what? Pennsylvania. Okay. <clears throat> I've been, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, so, yes, Kenny is, uh, he's 15. And uh, so he is going to... Uh, give our presentation uh, this evening. So uh, please get a uh, welcome and give a, a listen to our presenter, uh, Kenny Wright. All right, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kenny Wright. Um, I'm from Hanover, Pennsylvania. Uh, let me get the screen share going here. All right, uh, hello. Um, Tonight we'll be doing a presentation on the railroads around Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, Hagerstown has always been a hub for railroad activity with multiple railroads coming into the city limits and interchanging cars. 
Um, so let's dive in. So this is a brief introduction to uh, me. I was born September 13th, 2007. Um, I've always been a resident of Hanover, Pennsylvania. Um, and from a wee little age, I was obsessed with trains, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and I, I always enjoyed them, but as I believe it was 2015, I took a trip, we, uh, our family took a trip to Kansas city and I wanted to start taking videos of trains and posting them on YouTube. Like a lot of people were doing at that time. Um, and I will admit 2015 to 2020 wasn't very good video. Um, but in 2021, at the very beginning of the year, I transitioned into photography and I got a bit of a hang of that and have been doing that since and, uh, doing video. Um, if I went out to a spot and I was just sitting there, uh, if I was like chasing a train, I'd only do photography. Um, but video I do occasionally here. Um, so we'll dive into the train portion. Here's a bit of a crude map, map I put together of what we're going to be looking at. Hagerstown is going to be in the center here where all these lines converge. Um, the blue lines are going to be lines owned by CSX Transportation. The white lines are going to be owned by the Norfolk Southern. And red is going to be short lines. So in this map here, we have two CSX subdivisions that converge, two Norfolk Southern subdivisions that converge, and a Norfolk Southern branch that is shared with the Winchester and Western short line down here to Winchester. So we're going to start in the Hagerstown area. Um, so here's a sign on the Hagerstown uh, yard office for CSX. Um, this building has been around since the days of the Western Maryland Railway, which was the predecessor to CSX in Hagerstown. So this is a more close-up view of what we're going to be looking at. Um, the Western Maryland Railway's main lines um, from Cumberland and Connellsville came into Hagerstown, and there was a big hump yard here at one time. Um, and up here at CP Town, which we'll be discussing a lot, they, they crossed over um, what is now the Norfolk Southern and split between a line to Shippensburg, where they connected with the Reading Railroad, and their line to Baltimore, where a lot of the coal traffic and export trains would go. Um, WM dabbled in a lot of um, iron ore trains, a lot of coal that came on off of their system and pieces of their system they had trackage rights to get onto um, over the B&O in West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania. Um, but all this traffic had to come through the Hagerstown yard, and a lot of it got reclassified here. Um, the Western Maryland in the 50s, 60s, and 70s got into a very big and good partnership with a few other roads to form the alphabet route. Um, this included railroads like the Nickel Plate, uh, the Pittsburgh and West Virginia, later the Norfolk and Western, the Reading and the Central Railroad in New Jersey, along with the New Haven. Um, and this formed a pact of routes that could get a train from Chicago, Peoria, and St. Louis, all the way to Boston. Um, as one unit, um, and these trains would be called Alpha Jets, a lot of piggybacks um, and such. As Chessie system came into the picture with the Baltimore and Ohio and the Chesapeake and Ohio, um, the Chesapeake and Ohio and the Baltimore and Ohio executives kind of ruled that the WM, um, their main line was not needed because it paralleled the Baltimore and Ohio for most of the way, and it was part of a competing system to Chessie system. So they ripped up most of the main line west of Hagerstown, but kept it east of Hagerstown as the WM still served non-Baltimore and Ohio markets out there, such as Hagerstown. Um, now this one line here was a Baltimore and Ohio line, but it was a very crude right of way with a lot of sharp grades, sharp curves, viaducts, um, overbuilt, didn't see much traffic. So uh, they rerouted a lot of the um, Hagerstown and such lot through uh, over the Western Maryland. Then we come over to the Norfolk Southern, which from the north here into Hagerstown was the former Pennsylvania Railroad's Cumberland Valley subsidiary. Um, in Hagerstown, the Norfolk and Western interchanged here down in the Vardo Yard at the bottom of the map. Um, 
at Vardo, it was a shared Norfolk and Western and Penzi yard where trains going from the south, like New Orleans on the Southern Railway, Jacksonville, Florida, Chattanooga, Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama, would come up here through Roanoke, Virginia on the transitioning onto the Norfolk and Western. And then it would get handed off to the Pennsylvania Railroad to go to places like Philadelphia, New York. So it was a big interchange system um, to get between the southernmost markets and the northeasternmost markets. Uh, the Winchester and Western here uh, is on the former Cumberland Valley too. The Cumberland Valley went straight across at a diamond which is no longer in place. Um, and that was their main line of Winchester. So we had a lot of activity going on and um, through mergers and such, we would get um, consolidation, less trains, um, consolidation of the existing trains and such. So now um, CP Town is where all these train, all these lines converge. Um, it's a crossover, which is controlled by Norfolk Southern in current day. Um, and CSX runs on a good day about seven trains across it, six to seven. Um, NS on a good day as well can see 14. So it's a moderate hotspot. Um, still sees a lot of trains. Um, and most of them are still through trains on the Norfolk Southern, but CSX is mostly locals. So we'll start at the CSX yard. In the Western Maryland days, these were the caboose tracks because the WM had a big roundhouse here. As traffic declined, the roundhouse was demolished and took out of use. Um, and the caboose tracks did just fine for storing the locomotives needed for the area. So all these locomotives are most likely going to be seen on local services around Hagerstown, which we'll be focusing on in a moment. So down the connection track between the CSX yard and the Norfolk Southern yard, um, we'll come to the south end of Vardo on the old NW. Um, and here we see two subjects, the CSX transfer and a shopping cart that showed up. Um, we, nobody, know, oops, nobody knows the origins of this shopping cart. It just kind of appeared. Um, and it was there for over a month um, and I actually got shots of it with trains on two different days uh, when I went to Vardo. So here we see the Norfolk Southern Yard job kicking cars into the yard. Um, the yard job and the locals out of Hagerstown on Norfolk Southern, um, there are few, but they usually get very nice uh, locomotive lash-ups. Uh, so two years ago, it was two SD40Es, which are basically SD50s. And on this day, it was two SD40s. So now we're going to take a look at the um, line that goes to Winchester, not all the way, um, just to the Potomac River. Um, and this is a photo a friend of mine, Alex, took. Um, you'll be seeing a few of his photos because he lives in Hagerstown. Um, this is the Norfolk Southern job that goes down to Williamsport, Maryland. Um, and it switches the few industries NS still has online down there. And here we see the Winchester and Western making its turn between Winchester and Hagerstown to drop cars off with the Norfolk Southern. You may, you may have seen Winchester and Western cars around before. They have a large sand mine and a lot of um, natural resources that come out from their um, southern section of their line, um, which they ship up to CSX and Winchester and up to Hagerstown to interchange with the Norfolk Southern. And now we're back in Vardo. So here we see the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western uh, Heritage Unit on Norfolk Southern Train 25A, which is mostly high priority containers between Croxton, New Jersey, and Atlanta, Georgia. And here's our shopping cart again. So we'll go uh, to the north end of the yard, um, an older picture, one of my first pictures I took in Hagerstown of um, two Norfolk Southern trains meeting at the north end. Um, one coming south and the one just off to the left coming north. Here's a picture Alex took um, of two trains meeting on the double track section coming into Hagerstown proper. In the background, you can see some city buildings. So now we're going to come into CP Town. We see the CSX Lurgan subdivision coming in from the south, going straight across to the north. We see the Hanover subdivision going to the east here and the Norfolk Southern, no, Norfolk Southern's Lurgan branch going across towards the north. So here we see an NS train um, passing the control point box at 
town. Um, here's a one of the Norfolk Southern's AC um, 44 C6M rebuilds that they put up in their special paint scheme for the first few that were rebuilt. And here's another picture Alex took. Um, this is that same train we saw earlier at Vardo um, coming through town. Here's another Alex picture of the Pennsylvania Railroad Heritage Unit on home rails. Um, right here by the tree is where the old Conrail Tower would have stood. Um, there was a tower operator here for many years, but the tower, of course, shut down and it was all centralized to the Atlanta Dispatching Center Norfolk Southern currently resides in. In the foreground here, we see a industrial lead to a scrap dealer that is over here by CP Town. And between the NS tracks and the scrap lead is the CSX Lurgan subdivision. So we will start on my home piece of railroad, the Hanover subdivision, which runs from Baltimore, Maryland to Hagerstown. The bulk traffic that goes between Hanover and Baltimore is stone. Um, the original quarry that is in on the north side of Hanover um, was owned by Bethlehem Steel to take steel down to Sparrows Point once upon a time in the Western Maryland days. Um, but as Sparrows Point started to decline, the quarry got sold to Vulcan Materials. And now the, the uh, rock goes down to southwestern Baltimore. So here's a map of what we're looking at. Um, here we see a picture of the old Hanover Yard Office entrance sign that was torn out recently, uh, sitting next to one of the new CSX rebuilt AC44 locomotives. Um, we're going to be focusing on from the York Rail Interchange up here, going west to Hagerstown. So we're going to start on York Rail. York Rail is the main short line interchange on the Hanover subdivision, and it's where the local where um, the local that goes from Hagerstown to here, um, picks up most of its cars. So this is their expansive yard in West York, Pennsylvania. And their main customer on this line is the Spring Grove paper plant. This was owned by Gladfelter for many, many years, um, but it was recently bought by a company called Pixel. Um, and one interesting thing about this piece of railroad is Norfolk Southern runs coal trains down to the plant so they can generate their own power. Um, and you'll see actually tomorrow they're running one. Um, it's going to be, it's about hundred ish cars and, uh, two or three Norfolk Southern engines will be piloted by York rail crews down to the plant and they'll unload it over the weekend and not impede with York rails regular schedule. So here we are, um, just South of spring Grove, um, going towards Hanover. This is the, uh, York rail job that goes between York and Hanover RJ one road job one. Um, and this drops off cars and picks up cars from CSX in a small place called Smith's. So then we come into Porter's. Uh, over here on the right is the York Rail Track, and over here on the left is one of the two CSX lines that goes through here. There's a double Y in Porter's. Um, York Rail has one leg, and CSX has two legs that go from the same place to the same place. Coming west from there on the CSX Hanover subdivision, we see a rail train that ran fairly recently um, that was dropping welded rail along the line to do some improvements. And then we come into Smith's. This is the York rail train on CSX tracks running under trackage rights, making a drop at uh, Smith siding for the CSX local. If you look very closely, you can actually see the CSX local sitting down there waiting to get their cars. And here we see the CSX local on the west end of the siding, the other end, um, grabbing, their, grabbing the cars from York Rail. Now, this is one of the road crossings coming um, just before the yard, the small yard in Hanover. We see a particular engine of interest here. Um, at some point in time, uh, we don't know who uh, painted a Chessie logo on the front of this locomotive um, and commemoration of the chassis system but the paint has started to peel off and it's uh not as glamorous as was when it was freshly painted now here we come into the center street yard this is the hanover small yard which was never a freight yard in the western maryland days really it was a um engine terminal for the many trains that ran out of hanover to baltimore hagerstown and york um 
So we'll take a brief look at Center Street. Here's one of those stone trains that carries stone from the quarry in Hanover down to Baltimore. And here we see that rail train. Um, there was a tire fire somewhere uh, east of town um, that smoked up the sky when they came in to change crews here. And here we see the uh, local L-135, which runs from Hanover to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, and back. Uh, this train usually runs at night, um, but as the days, days start getting longer, um, its westbound run to Gettysburg will start to come into daylight. Now, York Rail has trackage rights into downtown Hanover. Here we see them at Middle Street um, to service a branch that was disconnected from their system after they abandoned one of their former main lines. And I couldn't pick uh, which photo I preferred for this location, so I dropped in two. Here we see the CSX local L136, which switches all the industries around the Hanover, Pennsylvania area, including, uh, including York Rail. Um, Usually it runs with two locomotives, as we'll see momentarily, but occasionally when they're doing power swaps, it'll only have one, and they'll have to run long hood forward. So this is also at Mill Street. Um, this is uh, one of the stone trains leaving in the late in the um, late hours of the day, around 10.45 p.m. Um, uh, this train is heading south towards Baltimore loaded. Coming around the curve, we come to Broadway Street, which is one of the main four roads that converges in Hanover that put it on the map in the early 1800s. Um, the train comes around this curve and we can see the siding that was in the last few photos, the uh, lead for that right here. And here we see a uh, train just west of uh, Broadway. You can see the railroad crossing in the bottom right and also the York Rail interchange track in Hanover to get to their spur that they disconnected from. Now you use CSX trackage rights to access. And also there's the uh, lead to the old Western Maryland Railway Freight House that is now a maintenance spur. Now this is one of the more famous spots in Hanover. This is the, for the site of the old Pennsylvania Railroad and Western Maryland Diamond, the tracks for which you can see right here in the bottom left. Um, this was torn out about five, six years ago by CSX due to the redundancy as York Rail no longer went across the diamond towards York. And the far, in the bottom right, you can see the connection track York Rail now uses. Now we'll take a hop down York Rail real quickly. This is their industry in Hanover that they run over CSX to get to. Um, it's a plastics company that gets some covered hoppers every so often. Back over on CSX, we can see the joint Pennsylvania Railroad and Western Maryland passenger station. Um, the Pansy was the main um, sponsor of this because it was on their line and not facing the WMs. Um, and it actually overhangs weird over the road, the roof does um, because of this. Off to the right is the Hanover Library, which we should be seeing in the next photo in the background. Um, that is the old site of the Western Maryland telegraphy office that was torn down to make way for the library. And here we see one of those power swaps, a Reading GP39-2, um, one of the few CSX still rosters um, running long hood forward through downtown Hanover on a section that where the tracks go up the median of a road. And at the end of that section where the tracks go on the median, there's a weird intersection, or that's what the people of Hanover referred to. To it as um, railroad crossing right in the middle of where two um, where a main road and the two one lane roads converge and there's a road coming across the other way it's a big mess and then just around the corner from that we come to elm siding which was what the western maryland called it um, mainly for the road but eventually a popular skating rink opened up called magic elm which provided for a uh, which provides for a good prop for photos of the train and here is the L136 switching um, one of our popular local brands, Utz Potato Chips, um, fairly well-known potato chip brand, which is headquartered and makes a lot of their products in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Um, and they serve, and CSX serves them um, occasionally. So in the north end, this is the where the quarry is. Here we see the CSX train that goes to Hagerstown um, in the very foggy morning. 
Off to the right would be the big quarry there where the stone trains are loaded. They produce about 40 cars every day. And coming north out of there, we come into the town of New Oxford. New Oxford has a old Western Maryland Railway passenger station, along with the Western Maryland Railway Railway Post Office car over here to the left as well. Now, the line coming out of Hanover to the west and to the east of Hanover as well, and once you get out of town, is very hilly. Um, a lot of sections where the grade will shoot down a very steep pass, and then it'll shoot right back up the other side. Um, so here we see one of these dips. I mean, if you follow this very long L-135 down the grade, you can see how the, it pops right back up on the other side. Um, so there's a lot of hills that they pull. Um, and actually, engines sound really nice going up and down because um, they're usually in fairly high notches. Coming into Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, this was the site of a, form, or of a uh, Civil War battle, a fairly influential one, where the South tried to invade the North. Um, the Confederates held this town for about a week um, and were kicked out by Union soldiers in the early July Battle of Gettysburg. And this is also a famous spot relating to the Battle of Gettysburg. Just off to left and right, there is two preserved battlefields and a bunch of monuments. Um, this is the, fa the famous railroad cut where Confederate soldiers hid from Union soldiers but were eventually overrun by the Union soldiers. So coming west out of Gettysburg, we come into the town of Ortana. Um, and coming out of Ortana, we start to come into the grade. The CSX Hanover subdivision um, will go up the Catoctin Mountains, up the side of it, up about a 1.5, 1 1.75% 1 gradient, scale up the side of it, and then go right over the top and go down into the Cumberland Valley. So here we are coming into the bottom of the grade. You can see the mountain in the background. Mountain does not look very tall, but it is indeed a logistical challenge coming up. Um, this is in um, near Fairfield, Pennsylvania. And then just west of Fairfield, there's a horseshoe curve, and right in the center of the horseshoe curve is a farm, um, which also provides for a very good prop for the trains. And uh, when they're running westbound out of Gettysburg, it's usually in very good light. Uh, east of Gettysburg, the train's running west in the morning, so you got the sun right over the train. And here we come into Greenstone. Um, Greenstone is in another horseshoe curve, um, and we're just about at the top of the mountain. Um, if you were to turn 180 degrees, you'd be looking down very, very far. Um, this road is on a very sharp S-curve, um, and right off the side of the S-curve is a fairly large descent to the bottom. And then we come up to the top of the grade. This is Highfield. Highfield is where the main line to Baltimore and the line to Hanover split off. The Western Maryland had technically two routes to Baltimore, um, which split near the town of Reisterstown and came back together here at Highfield. Um, the East Subdivision, which is now Short Line Maryland Midland, which we'll take a look at momentarily, um, that owns the former main line, and CSX still operates the Hanover Sub, which was more of a secondary route, but also serviced a lot of the orchards and a lot of the industry up in south, um, west, south central Pennsylvania. So here's a photo uh, my friend Alex took on the Maryland Midland of their train UBHF, Union Bridge to Highfield. Um, this is their main tur turn job. Uh, the Maryland Midland mainly serves the uh, Lehigh Cement Company in Union Bridge and takes a very large amount of cars up to Highfield on a weekday basis um, that get interchanged with CSX. Here's another photo Alex took back on the Hanover subdivision. This is at the bottom of the hill after Highfield, um, looking off of a road overpass. And then just to show you what we've just came down, the uh, tracks just scaled down the side of this mountain range up here. And we're just about at the bottom, but we're still coming down a fairly hefty grade, um, but more in, but we're in flatter territory by this point. Um, coming west from there, we're about to enter security. Um, this is a nice railroad crossing because it still hosts a Western Maryland Railway era um, railroad crossing mounted on a relay box. Here's another photo Alex took. Uh, we're at security. There's a big plant here, and uh, they're 
structures tower over the train tracks. Uh, the line in the foreground is the former Baltimore and Ohio Hagerstown branch, which went to Brunswick, Maryland. The uh, line the Chessie system did not prefer because of how uh, grueling it was. So here's the CSX job that still goes down a portion of that line over this wood pile trestle over a creek. Uh, they go down to a small metals dealer, um, drop some cars off, and make the interchange there. The line is only about three, four miles long now. And here we come into right where the uh, approach marker is for CP Town, because we're in downtown Hagerstown at this point, and we're about to hit the interlocking, which means time to transition. So that was the Hanover subdivision. Now we're going to look at both the Norfolk Southern and CSX Lurgan subdivisions. Now these lines that are highlighted and larger than the rest they used to be both fairly respectable main lines, but due to Conrail, there was some consolidations and some abandonments and movement of traffic patterns. Basically, when Conrail took over, they had one and a half lines between Hagerstown and Harrisburg. They had the full Pennsylvania Railroad line, which currently ends in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, but used to go all the way to Shippensburg. And they had the former Reading line to Shippensburg, which was the partner to the Western Maryland. So Conrail consolidated, as Conrail did, and they abandoned part of the Penzi north of Shippensburg and used the Redding, which bypassed the West of Maryland, causing, the West, causing a lot of the traffic to be shifted off of that line. Um, and, to this, and currently there is no through train that CSX services that goes to Harrisburg via the Lurgan. Um, CSX does still have a branch line coming out of Shippensburg to the Letterkenny Army Base, which they access via trackage rights over Norfolk Southern. Uh, one thing to note on the Norfolk Southern line is Conrail put up a bunch of tri-light signals, their signature signal, um, sometime after the takeover of the line. And two sets still dot this subdivision between Hagerstown and Harrisburg. So here's the photo Alex took. Um, I have not really ventured onto the Lurgan subdivision much for CSX, so most of the uh, photos on the CSX section will be his. Here we see the Spirit of the Armed Forces hauling IO-16, which is the intermodal train between Chicago and Chambersburg, which is the big CSX inland uh, facility they built. Here we see a duo of Max on one of the other intermodal trains from Chambersburg. And this is at CP Town, coming south off of the Lurgan branch, um, down into Hagerstown. And this is the local that goes up to Chambersburg from Hagerstown to service the few industries in the pouring snow. Um, and now here at Reed, right. we see one of the grain elevators that dot this line. Um, the West Maryland owned this line, and they were fairly accustomed to localized customers shipping out stuff as such as localized grain um, and products to that effect. So there was a lot of places like Reed here where we see a huge um, grain fa facility that is now abandoned due to the decline of shipping method of just a localized silo. So here we see one of my photos um, at the south end of Chambersburg. This line used to be double tracked as it was a major main line of the Western Maryland and they did a lot of separation of gradient. So they would have a high line and a low line to keep the gradient even for uh, eastbound and westbound trains, depending on um, if they're going up or down. So here we see the split to the now abandoned um, eastbound main, uh, which goes off to the right and has a longer route to accommodate for a uh, lesser gradient for trains going up the hill. Um, and the intermodal trains will go onto the eastbound train going against the flow of traffic or what would have been the flow of traffic to get into the intermodal yard. Now, this is Chambersburg intermodal yard. Um, there's a few industries around here, but there's a this is a fairly elaborate facility that has four tracks, um, is always working something um, and will get one outbound train and one inbound train a day, all usually a uh, couple thousand feet long. So now we'll transition on to the NS. Uh, here's a photo Alex took in 
south of Morgansville in one of the humongous silos. Um, one of the few in the area that NS still serves. Um, and here we see to what looks to be 27A with a Norfolk Southern Heritage Unit leading. And then we come north into what NS's solution to the Chambersburg facility was. CSX built a very successful facility, so Norfolk Southern built one too. And what was discovered was the Norfolk Southern one uh, stole half of the business from Chambersburg. Um, and it is also very successful to this day, getting served by one train in and one train out. Now, here's one of those Conrail Trilight sets on the north end of the Greencastle siding. Here's 27A with one of the, again, one of the uh, Norfolk Southern AC6000 or AC44 C6M rebuild locomotives. Um, and the line goes through a few farm fields, a very ruralized area, and then we come into the town of Chambersburg. There's another siding here, um, and here we see a southbound mixed freight train. Now, when putting this presentation together, I did not realize that it was going to be on merger day. Um, so I put these photos in because of their content, of uh, what they showed, um, not for the engine leading. Uh, this was at the very end of 2021, this, the day after Christmas. Um, and I had just gotten a 18 to 135 zoom lens, and uh, this was my first time trying it out on anything. Um, results were great. So here we here we're going to chase the uh, a military train shoving back from Shippensburg into the Letterkenny Army base. Um, there was a man riding the last flat car, and they shoved back at about 10 miles an hour. So it was a very easy chase. So here we are on the west side of Shippensburg, coming up to what was called Lurgan. That is where the Western Maryland and the Reading interchanged in this town, um, and what is now just a very unincorporated place in the middle of two farmers' fields. So also very ruralized area, and they're backing into the sunset. Um, and we cut the chase off at Letterkenny, but there's a lot of photos. Um, can't include them all. But yeah, that's my little ode to Kansas City Southern. So east of the Shippensburg siding, uh, in the middle of it, there are two intermediate signals that Conrail put up here. Um, both of these still retain their tri-lights uh, that Conrail installed back in the, either the late 80s or the sometime in the 90s. And then some more twists and turns on the Redding, which was a lot more hilly and a lot more grade uh, heavy. Um, and we come into Carlisle Junction. This is another siding um, which was the connection to the Redding's Gettysburg branch, um, which is now the Gettysburg Railroad, and a siding which ran and a siding that runs about uh, 15,000 feet to Spring. The Redding's line through here was at one time completely single or completely double tracked, um, but that was reduced to sidings um, a long, long time ago in the Redding days. So here we see one of the uh, sections where it goes to the farmer's field. This is a embankment splitting two fields um, just east of Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. And the line uh, runs through a few very small communities uh, by Messiah University. And then we come into Harrisburg. Um, this is the village of Camp Hill, which is one of, which is just outside of Harrisburg. And here we see a train meet. Um, if a train comes into Harrisburg and it needs a crew change, um, instead of clogging up the very busy Harrisburg terminal, they'll hold the train at the siding here just west of Harrisburg and swap the crews there. And while they're swapping the crews on this train, um, a southbound came by. So I got a picture of the two trains meeting here. And then we come, the very, uh, come across the very impressive Reading Stone Arch Bridge. Um, this is also a place where they'll usually park trains waiting to come into the Harrisburg terminal. Uh, but not needing a crew change, of course. Um, so these, both of these trains are heading into the Norfolk Southern's big Anoli yard, but of course there's only a single track connecting the Lurgan to the line to Anola, so you have to wait one at a time. All right, we're going to get into part four, and this is the uh, line that coming out of Hagerstown that is most most interesting to uh, many folk. Um, this is the Norfolk Southern H line, the H indicating Hagerstown. Um, this line is interesting mostly on the southern end, south of Front Royal, Virginia, to Roanoke, because as the picture indicates, it still has the 
classic Norfolk and Western colored position light signals. These signals are currently in the process of getting phased out by Norfolk Southern because of the major hinders on this line. When the Norfolk and Western installed this infrastructure, the trains were much shorter. They installed these in the early 1920s. Um, some of these signals will be coming up on 100 years old if they keep them around for a few more years. But the downside to this was all the sidings are at least 6,000 feet or under. Um, so the mega trains that PSR brought on, and even before precision scheduled railroading, there were major issues with parking trains out here and passing trains. Because, of course, if you have a 15,000 foot train and you want to pass two of them, the best bet you have is to not run a train between Front Royal and Roanoke, both of these trains at one time, and that's a span of about 200 miles. So that is a large issue um, for the line. And that's a reason why NS is phasing these signals out and they're extending a few sidings. They put one in recently. So here's what we're going to be looking at. Hagerstown's up here. We have the big uh, former Baltimore and Ohio main line and Hagerstown up here with the CSX, former Western Maryland. Coming south, uh, the former Southern Railway comes in with the B line going down to the Southern's main line to the south from the District of Columbia. Down towards the south of the line, we'll get into the former Chesapeake and Ohio East-West main line, which is now owned by CSX and the Buckingham branch. There's a few other short lines in the area, such as the Shenandoah Valley Railroad, uh, but that will not get, but the uh, Buckingham branch in Shendo will not get coverage in this presentation. So this is a photo Alex took at uh, St. James, Maryland, just south of um, Hagerstown. There's a lot of impressive viaducts and such um, between here and Front Royal, including one massive one over the Potomac River. Um, but we're going to skip over to the south end with the CPLs. So this was a train just north of Front Royal. Uh, this is train 274. Norfolk, Virginia to Enola Yard. Um, this train uh, works a lot of places and is very hit or miss. Uh, usually it'll be carrying, it, some days it'll be carrying 100 cars and other days, like this day, it'll be carrying five. Um, so then we'll come into Front Royal. Uh, the Norfolk and Western and the Southern Railway had a big junction here. Uh, which Norfolk Southern utilizes a lot to route some trains over the Southern to get to Southeastern markets and some trains over the former Norfolk and Western to get to Southwestern markets, such as Chattanooga and Knoxville. So this is the northernmost CPL on the line, just south of Front Royal at Control Point Warren. Just in the trees back here, you can see one of the infamous uh, Y brackets, um, which we'll see many of, such as this one at Summit. Uh, the train is going into the siding here because they have um, expanded service on this line for mixed freight trains. Um, so here we see train 13Z, Allentown to Knoxville, um, coming through Summit and going into the siding for a train meet. And here at Control Point Vong, we see the train that's meeting. Uh, this is M4Z, an extra 14Z, coming north. Uh, the two trains will meet at the siding. And then the 13Z will crawl out, passing the other end of the siding's uh, position lights. And then we come through Shenandoah, Virginia, and we come in through Waynesboro, where the Buckingham branch meets this line. And then we have Lipsicum. Um, I may have mispronounced that name, but uh, it's um, that's this is one of the more interesting CPLs. Uh, just south here at Stewart's Draft is another set. Um, with double round discs on the single track, which are a key uh, piece because not many of the control points have those. So uh, now that we've covered all the lines in Hagerstown area, we're gonna discuss some of the surrounding things. So if you show up on a day where things are slow, there's many other options for seeing trains. And we're gonna start at the furthest locations and close in on the uh, nearest ones. So the furthest one would be the Norfolk Southern's Port Road branch. Uh, this is their main line to Baltimore, Maryland, um, with, and uh, the Delaware Chemical Coast and such. Um, the, tra the trains on this line are mostly night, uh, except for a few select locals and the extra odd movement that runs during the day that is going to go tie down on the Port Road somewhere. 
um, or the occasional run that runs out of schedule. So then also we have the Norfolk Southern Harrisburg Terminal, uh, which has three yards, Rutherford, GI8, and Enola, a very busy place um, right at the end, the eastern end of Norfolk Southern's famous Pittsburgh line and um, the start of, and the western point of the Harrisburg line. Uh, many lines converge here. Uh, there's train tracks going all over the place. One good thing about this is it has ATCS on multiple different um, platforms so you can track train movements. And then we're going to get into some tourist railroads. Uh, this is one of the two tourist railroads in Maryland, the Western Maryland Scenic. They have their big Malley steam locomotive, the 1309, and a host of many Western Maryland painted um, diesel locomotives. Uh, they have a nice little operation out there. Big hill, lots of action with the steam locomotive. Then we have the East Broadtop and the uh, Rock, Hill Trolley, uh, Rock Hill Furnace Trolley Museum. Um, both share some ground here, so we can see the trolleys meeting the newly restored number 18 steam locomotive they have. Um, and East Broadtop and the Trolley Museum have a lot of nice pieces of equipment, such as this Doodle Bog, San Francisco Trolley, uh, the York Railways car, which, of course, I'm biased to, as that is a fairly local car to me. Uh, the steam engine... That engine uh, is very awesome. Steals to show up there. The other tourist railroad in Maryland, the Walkersville Southern, uh, if you catch them at the right time, they will have a steam locomotive, one of the Grambling tanks on lease. Um, and that little 040, it's given everything it's got to pull those big sold out trains. Um, Walkersville Southern is also known for their uh, wide variety of center cab switcher locomotives, such as 44 tonners, 45 tonners, um, a lot of a whole host of things, some Plymouths. And pretty much the closest thing would be the CSX Cumberland subdivision, which um, there's a lot of spots you can go to that are close to Hagerstown, but the closest one is um, most likely Harpers Ferry or Martinsburg, West Virginia, uh, which is about 25 miles away. And of course, Shenandoah Junction, where the Norfolk Southern H line goes over top of this line on a bridge, which is a big hot spot. Uh, this line, the traffic can vary um, but it sees a lot of high priority intermodal trains, a lot of coal traffic. Um, west of Brunswick, Maryland, you're going to see a lot of grain trains and ethanol trains, um, a lot of unit uh, trains on this line. So I'll go into uh, questions. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, if you have any questions for Kenny, just unmute yourself and ask. Go ahead. Hey, Kenny. Um, in the beginning, you showed a photo. There are three towers in the uh, background. They look like uh, shot towers. Um, the brick ones? Yeah. I was wondering, uh, do you know the history of what that industry was? Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. Um, let me get the picture. This one? Yes, correct. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what that industry was, um, but I could give you a general location if you wanted to pull it up on uh, Google Earth. Um, sure. It's in Hanover, Pennsylvania. It is along the railroad tracks between Middle Street and Center Street um, on the eastern side of town. Okay, thank you. It's going to be on the south side of the tracks, geographically south side of the tracks. Uh, you showed the trolleys museum, and I saw I seem to see there a Simon's uh, Siemens trolley. Was that already retired? Uh, let me see. Was it from the uh, red Diego, one? I, yeah, the red one from San Diego, I think. Um, I I was curious about that, but I uh, neglected to look into the specifics of that one. Um, I know they got it yeah, mildly yeah. recently. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's been running around for a while there. Uh, that's a good question. I don't actually know the answer to that one um, because that was a fairly recent addition, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, not exactly sure why it came to the Pennsylvania, one of the Pennsylvania museums, but it's a great piece to have. Um, very nice um, car. Uh, I think they take what they could 
get. Yeah. <laughs> the hands on. Yep. <laughs> if it's offered for cheap. Definitely. Oh, I, I was not aware that they all have they them already retired. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they're all retired, but um, I'm not sure on the exact status of that one. Yeah, you have to remember to save the modern equipment too. Yep, I agree. Because one day it might be gone. Yep, and we've kind of made that uh, blunder a lot, you know, with uh, a lot of people wanting to save the first generation diesels in the 80s and yep. 90s when they were all scrapped and such. It's a scale. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions for Kenny? Uh, if not, uh, I just want to say thanks a lot, Kenny. It was very well done. Uh, let's uh, thank Kenny, give him a little round of applause. And uh, one interesting comment uh, is that uh, I just want to say, Kenny, if you're ever in this area, you know, let us know. Uh, you are more than welcome to join myself or whomever. We'll definitely take you to all our hot spots and uh, show you around. So uh, please do that uh, if you get a chance, or uh, hopefully we can get out your way too. So again, thanks. And uh, right. we're going to be sending Kenny a uh, one of our Wisconsin Rails books, and as a thank you, so uh, we'll get that out to him. And it's interesting that. Kenny may have been one of our, I believe, one of the youngest presenters we've ever had uh, at 15. And down here in attendance, uh, we have one of our members, Ralph McClure, who last Monday turned 90. So uh, we have a little age difference, a uh, little range in the audience tonight. So, uh, but uh, congratulations to Ralph and on uh, turning 90. And uh, he's, Still going strong, so I, I think he'll be a, uh, he'll be a centurion or whatever they're called. Not a centurion. They're the ones that just did the Good Friday thing. But uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was close. Yes. So a couple other uh, announcements. Uh, again, uh, a lot of the, all this comes to you through the uh, uh, Wisconsin NRHS chapter, and. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed Kenny's presentation. And if you couldn't tell, he is a fan of signals. Uh, he did mention that to us in our little run through. And obviously he knows uh, quite a, a good deal about the signals. So, uh, and the best way to uh, stay in touch is to uh, join our chapter. It's $20 to, uh, to get the newsletter sparks and cinders. And uh, so, you can either, if you want to check us out, it's www.nrhswis.org. Uh, check, check it out. We also, it's $20. There is a, a renew or subscribe button right there. And you can do that. Or you can also uh, send in your payment. It would be a dollar extra if you do it online. And we also have our, the past issues of Sparks and Cinders available to look at. And you can also check out, our, we do a Facebook. That's how Kenny got in touch with me was through our Facebook page. So that's also out there and available. So, uh, and one other, couple other things. Uh, for those that are local, we are looking at having our banquet in October. And we're looking for someone, and I'll put something in Sparks and Cinders. We're looking for someone to kind of uh, plan it and help plan it. I know you can talk to Ralph. And you can talk to uh, Neil and Kathy. They've done it in the past. So uh, we're looking to do that. And also this summer, I wanted like to do again the uh, uh, an excursion at East Troy. I was thinking about going back to the old standby, do one in the evening, maybe have some pizza or something before. And But I'd like to really arrange some uh, photo shots with maybe some older cars. So if you know anybody that's got an old car, Ralph, you got one from 90 years ago? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but uh, watch for that. I'm going to try and get a date put together, and it would just be a, a nice evening to uh, to ride a streetcar. 
So uh, other than that, I don't really have anything else. Again, we are looking for a president for the chapter. I am the current vice president and acting president, and, and I don't act very well, so I'm not a very good actor. But uh, so if you are interested, please get in touch with me. You, you can do that through Sparks and Cinders or the website or Facebook. And uh, if you're interested in that, and we'd like to get some more people trained on this Zoom set up i actually did it today and it and it actually worked <laughs> uh wonder of wonders but it actually worked without too much problem and uh so again uh we're looking for people to help with the setup down here at church so uh and those of us down here we're celebrating we are merger day and 414 day where there's actually some cookies and uh drinks in the back so help yourself uh be kind of hard to put those over zoom but we could show a picture i guess but <laughs> so again that's all i have uh, again thank you kenny it was a great presentation